Welcome to exploring the relationship between two quantitative variables. And this video we're gonna focus on is a linear model reliable? So hopefully by now you know what a least squares regression model is. And the big question is, is it a reliable model? This is one that typically comes up on tests. How do you know if your model is reliable? So let's first talk about what that means, reliable. So reliability can equate to how good is the model at making predictions? Or are the predictions good ones, right? If you're trying to use a line to make predictions for your ex, you know, from your explanatory variable to your response variable, you, you, you want to make good predictions and you want those predictions to be fairly accurate. So how could we judge this? How could we answer this question? Well, there's actually two values that can, that could really tell us very specifically how reliable our line is. So if you're asked about reliability, you kind of want to mention these two values. The first is called the coefficient of determination which is a really cool value. I mean, just take a minute and appreciate the name of that, the coefficient of determination. I mean, that sounds really powerful. But to be honest, the coefficient of determination is simply your R value, your correlation squared. So we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in a moment. And then the other value that helps us judge reliability is the standard deviation of the residuals. So the residuals is how far off each actual value is from predicted. So if, think about the standard deviation as like how far off the residuals typically are, right? And a standard deviation in, you know, standard deviation on its own is how far data is from the mean. So here we're thinking when I'm working with residuals, I'm thinking about how far off the data is from the predicted line, which if you think about reliability, that actually makes a lot of sense because if you, we want to have small residuals, right? We want our residuals to be really small. That means our predictions are very close to what actually occurred, and that's a good thing. So standard deviation is basically a measurement of how close those residuals are to that predicted line. So to really truly under, oh, by the way, the, the, the standard deviation of the residuals is just known as S. All right, so let's talk about this through an example, because through an example would make a lot more sense. So, hey, Ford F-150s. So 16 Ford F-150s, we look at the miles of each truck, and we look at the price of each truck. And we notice a strong, negative, pretty linear trend here as the miles on a truck goes up, the used car price or used price of that truck goes down. So the first thing we've done that we've already learned about is, hey, let's put a linear model through this data, our least squares regression line. And that formula is right here. Very simple, all stuff that we should have already covered. So now the question I'm asking you is, is this line a reliable line? Is it a good one? Does it make good predictions? Well, here are the two ways that we analyze that. First, the two values that I'm talking about, I already mentioned, are R squared, called the correlation of deter, or the coefficient of determination, excuse me, and S, the standard deviation of the residuals. You will never have to worry about calculating those values. They will always be given to you in one of these computer output tables. So in one of these computer output tables, we don't need any of these values yet. We need A and B. That's what we get right here, A and B. And then now we're going to use the R squared and the S. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is these two numbers that is the focus of this video, um, don't worry about calculating. They will be given to you in one of these computer output tables. It, the more important thing is you being able to interpret and understand them. So let's talk about the coefficient of determination first, R squared. So what is this? I mean, again, let's really appreciate how cool of a name that is, the coefficient of determination. And in, in really general terms, it's how much the X variable determines the Y variable. So we're actually going to put a proportion to that. So it is the proportion of variation in the response variable Y that is actually explained by the variation in the explanatory variable X. So think of the coefficient of determination as a proportion of how tightly related these two variables are. You got your, your different y's and you got your different x's. So this is actually giving a proportion of those different y's that is actually because of or explained by those different x's. So in really simple terms, the coefficient of determination is a proportion or a percentage of those y variables that are actually because of those x variables. So it actually makes a lot of sense. It's the percentage of variation in the y variable that is explained by the use of the regression line. 
What do we do with the regression line? We use it to make predictions. So we're giving a value of how tightly intertwined these two values are. So it is a proportion which can be turned into a percentage. So we start off with zero. That would be zero percent. That would basically mean there's no connection whatsoever. And why are we even putting a linear model through data that has no connection? But then we go all the way up to one, which is 100 percent. That would mean that there is a perfect relationship and 100% of the Y is actually due to the X, right? Perfect relationship. And then obviously we have 0.5 in between, which would be 50%. That'd be kind of in the middle of the data, kind of weaker. That shows that 50% of the variation in Y is actually because of the variation in X. Obviously, we would rather be on the stronger side above 50%. That is showing that there is a pretty good connection between your two variables. So if we go back to our truck problem, R, R squared was 0.66. That's 66%, okay, as a percentage. So that is actually showing that these two variables of the price, the mileage on a truck and its price are related. How closely are they related? Well, about 66%. So there's obviously other factors that go into the price of a truck besides its mileage, but the mileage of a truck has a lot to do with the price of that truck. So now all we have to do is say that in a very elegant way. So I kind of have like a script and here's the script. Follow the script, you can't go wrong. So the R squared is the percent of the variation in the Y that could be explained by the variation in the X. So all we have to do is fill in the blanks here. So for our specific problem, that was 66%. Actually, I don't need the percent sign. I already had it there. But anyway, 66% of the variation in the Y, price of a Ford one, F-150. Ford F-150. It can be specific, right? Why not? That can be explained by the variation in mileage. Okay, there we go. So again, it's the percentage of variation in the Y that can be explained by the variation in the X. So in our case, 66% of the variation in the price of a truck can be explained by the variation in mileage. So the different prices of a truck do have a lot to do with the different mileage of the truck, and we're connecting it. 66% is, is not great, but it's not terrible either. Obviously, if we get into the 90s, that's showing a very strong connection. So this is a fairly reliable line. It's fairly connected. Obviously, it could be better, but 66% is not terrible. So once again, if I erase what I wrote here, we kind of get a script that you could fill in for any problem when interpreting R squared. It's the percentage of variation in the Y that can be explained by the variation in the X. Make sure you have that word variation in there twice because you have to understand that there are lots of Y's and lots of X's. So there's a bunch of different Y's. That's what variation means. They vary. There's differences. And there's a lot of different X's as well. All right, let's move on to the second value that helps us understand the reliability of our linear model, and that is the standard deviation of the residuals. So let's talk a little bit about what it is first. So uh, the standard deviation of all the residuals is how far off a typical data point is. In other words, when you use the linear model to make a prediction, the standard deviation tells you how far off that prediction will typically be. So, you know, if you look back at the data, every point has its own residual. Correct, right? Every point has its own residuals. Some are a little bit larger, like this one, or this one, and some are a little bit smaller, like this one has a very small residual, this one has a very small residual, and this one does too. So think of S as the standard deviation of the residuals. It's how far off you typically are when making a prediction. It's really that simple. When you use this red line to make a prediction about the price of a truck, how far off will you typically be? So again, let's go back to our computer out, uh, analysis here. And in this, we actually see our S value. Now, first off, S is measured in the same unit as your Y. So that'd be dollars. This is dollars price. So this is basically telling us that our standard deviation of the residuals is about $5,740. So when we use our model to try to predict the price of a truck, we're typically off by $5,740. Now, when you're predicting the price of a truck, that's actually not too bad. It's, it's not great, but again, it's not terrible. So let's talk a little bit more about how we're going to write this up. Again, it's a script. If you kind of just think about filling that script in, you can't go wrong. 
So when using the linear model to make predictions for fill in the blank, the model will typically be off by fill in the blank. So let, for our specific problem, let's fill in those blanks. When using the linear regression model to predict, uh, to make predictions for the price of a truck, and you could be more specific there, a Ford F-150, okay? The model's typically off by $5,740.13 if you want. Now, that's not great. I mean, that's a kind of a lot of money. That's almost $6,000. And I hope when we're trying to predict the price of a truck, you would be a little bit closer than $6,000. So that's, again, that's another reason why, you know, is this line for our specific problem right now, is it a very reliable one? Well, I would say it's like kind of mediocre. The R squared is 66%. So the two variables are kind of related, but not extremely very related. And the S value is kind of on the higher side. You know, if I'm predicting a house, think about that for a second. If I was predicting the price of a house and I was only off by $5,700, that's actually pretty good. That would be a low number for predicting the price of a house. But for predicting the price of a truck, I have to be kind of honest, this is kind of a higher value. I would like to be a little bit more accurate. So at the end of the day, how reliable is my line? Eh, it's not great, but it's not terrible. It's kind of somewhere in between here. But when you're asked about that, these are the two numbers you'd want to report. So if we go all the way back to our line, and here's our line, here's our data that we get from that computer outlet, output analysis. If I was asked how reliable this is, I'd start off by saying, uh, it's somewhat reliable. First off, the core uh, coefficient of determination tells me that 66% of the variation in the price of a truck is explained by the variation in the mileage of the truck. That's not great, but it could be worse. And then when making predictions with my line of the price of a truck, I'm typically going to be off by about $5,700. And that's kind of a lot of money to be off by when you're predicting the price of a used truck. I would hope we're a little bit lower. So at the end of the day, it's 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 not very reliable, but it's it's not it's not terrible either. But those are the values that we want to look at when we measure the reliability of a linear regression model. And you know, change the scenario, change the exponential variable, change the response variable, but the scripts that you fill in don't change, which makes it kind of nice and simple if you understand these scripts. So filling in these scripts is going to make your life really easy when it comes to explaining what you are doing. Um, you know, just, just, just to give you another example, just to kind of throw this out there real quick, maybe you're predicting the weight of an elephant and your, in your S, the standard deviation of residuals is 9.5 pounds. You would say, okay, when using the linear model, the linear model to make predictions for the weight of an elephant, I'm typically going to be off by 9.5 pounds. And when you're predicting the weight of an elephant that weigh thousands of pounds, that's actually really, really good. That's a very low number. But always think about context. Let's change the problem to predicting the weight of a mouse. When using a linear model to make predictions for the weight of a mouse, I'm typically going to be off by 9.5 pounds. Holy crap, that's very unreliable. Mouse only weigh less than a pound. So if I'm off by nine pounds, I'm doing a terrible job. So again, it's not about the numbers being big or small. Obviously, smaller is better, but it's also have to apply the context. Is that a small number in context of the problem? We would rather our S be smaller, showing that we're more reliable, closer to what's actually happening. And we always would rather our R squared value to be higher, showing a stronger connection between the two variables. All right, that's it for understanding the reliability of a linear regression model. Hopefully it made sense.